What's happening, everybody? Uh, my name's DRock, and today I want to talk a little bit about how I do my drums. Um, I guess first things first, uh, I'll have to show you how I have my Kong set up. Um, I have all the outputs going to their to their individual mix channels. That way, I can process each drum individually with with more stuff than just the onboard than just the onboard effects uh, of the uh, Kong. Um, and we'll do a little bit of uh, composition as well. Um, as you can see, I've got kick and snare going to their own bus, and then everything goes out a master drum bus. That's for some extra processing as a whole. But yeah, let's uh, dive right into it and get some samples. Uh, I've been abusing the heck out of the Damned Essential Drums Volume 2. Uh, they're really awesome. I like that one, it's nice and punchy. And snare. I like number four, that's one of my favorites. It has a nice tail and, a, and like a nice body. Cool, let's get some uh, drums in the sequencer so we can get them on a loop as we, as we start processing them. Um, Try to do this quick so I don't waste too much of your time. Cool. Well, first things first uh, that I can notice is that that snare has way too long, way too long of a tail. That's a bit better. Okay, so now let's uh, start sending some stuff out. So kick, load a 3-4, that way it goes to the kick channel. And snare, I go up 5-6 to the snare channel. Let's start with the kick. Um, first thing I'll do, throw on an EQ. Do a super low cut to get any super sub frequencies, as well as a manual cut with, uh, with, um, with um, parameter one. And then I'll boost some of that junk down there to kind of to kind of make up for some of the loss of the super low frequencies. Okay, you you kind of sweep around, figure out where where you want to boost. Like that'd be too low. That's too high though. So probably something like that. Widen the cue a bit. Now we gotta get rid of some of that boxiness. Um, this is a pretty easy thing to do, and it's something that'll really tighten up your overall kick drum sound. Um, I, just, I just like to boost, and then sweep around, and find what I don't like. I know right off the bat I don't like that 600, 625-ish. Yeah, that, that already cleans it up a lot. I don't like that either. There we go, that's a bit tighter. Now let's go for some compression. Uh, compressing drums. Um, I'll always have the release all the way down. At the fastest possible. Um, that way when you're doing some fast drum stuff, like a, the compressor will let go versus when it's all the way up, you start to lose a lot of the volume. Uh, as for the uh, attack time, kind of sweep, sweep around. You don't want it too fast. You want it to kind of catch that that initial transient and then clamp down on the tail. And you might want to shorten up your kick sample as well a bit. Don't go too short because then you lose all all of the um, all the punch. I'd probably do something about like that. So then right there, we already have a pretty decent sounding kick drum. Uh, let's move on to the snare. Uh, the snares in in this pack that I was using, Damned Essential, they're already pretty processed. Um, 
Typically, I'll always start with a uh, Scream 4 on tape mode. P1 all the way up at the fastest speed. And now that I have it going through there, I want to shorten this up even more. Yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, for EQ, I will do a low cut once again. Just to get rid of any of that really low, low, low junk that you know is not needed in a snare drum sound. You may want to boost where the body of of the of the drum is. If you're looking for like a real deep sound, it's going to be somewhere around 200, 250. a real real slight boost almost just giving as if this was, this was a like, kind of pretending this was a high pass filter and almost give it a tiny bit of like uh, resonance right there then for compression once again fastest possible release um, play with the attack typically with with, with a snare drum I, I want a slightly longer attack something like that I might actually get rid of this boost lower it a bit so yeah something like that um, then I'll probably put a little tiny bit of reverb on the snare drum um, I'm a I'm a big fan of plate reverbs uh, no not spring I do not like spring verbs And then I'll probably do a high pass. Probably something like that. Um, it's real, real subtle. Just It just kind of puts it in a space. All right, now let's move on to some hi-hats. Uh, for hi hats, I always use two. I always use two se uh, two separate samples. Um, one of my favorites in here is uh, uh, where is it? Check. I like check. I like the sound of it. It's kind of soft. Um, I'm actually jumping to the exclusive drum sorted. That might be kind of cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'll work. Um, I like to keep my hi hat separate, and then I like to just kind of jog back and forth between the two samples. Gives it a nice variation throughout throughout the drum beat. Uh, and then we'll throw in some extra sounds in here. At a lower velocity, though. Ah, uh, yeah, I like it down there more. Uh, let's see here. We'll copy the whole thing over. And then for a bit more variation, we'll do something like this. Lower these velocities. I'll have the middle or the ones on the on the 30 seconds um, lower and the one that's on the 16th be a little bit higher so we'll round off every every phrase with that but just for a little bit of variation so let's see, let's see what we got cool I'll pan these out just slightly just 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 to kind of get them off center a little bit Add a bit more movement in the in the overall um, in the um, in the um, in the um, stereo spectrum, and we'll send these out their own outputs. Processing hats, uh, it's very very similar to to the snare. I'll normally start with a scream on tape to uh, to kind of help glue them together. 
I sent these out the wrong output. <laughs> what do you know? Seven and eight is what we want, not five and six. There we go. And we're definitely going to have to do a um, we're definitely going to have to do a a um, high pass to get rid of all that chunk in the bottom. So what, the only thing with uh, the um, with the um, scream is that it'll tend to add in a bunch of extra lows that you really don't need. That's better. And then uh, we actually will not compress these, and we'll just toss on just a tiny bit of verb. Herb, once again, plate with a high pass. Just a super tiny amount, just, just, just to put them in, in a little bit of space. Uh, if we kind of A, B that, you should be able to hear a, a, a decent difference. Kind of just helps you know bring bring them more more t to life. Cool. Um, sometimes I will end up uh, throwing uh, like a soft tube saturation knob on on the um, on the um, on the um, kick snare bus. Uh, or, or on the overall drums, uh, we'll do it on the overall drums just for the sake of time. You know, here this this can kind of really bring your bring your drums to to, to life as well. I like to put on keep low to keep that kick drum dis distortion down. So uh, yeah, that's how I that that's how I tend to process my my uh, my um, drums. Uh, if you have any if you have any specific re, uh, requests for for tutorials, uh, leave a comment and let me know. And um, yeah, hope you guys learned something, and I will see you next time.